I read this text this past week and I said, really? We just started the narrative lectionary and here's what we get. I get this story about God asking a father to take his only son, tie him up, put him on an altar and sacrifice him. The good news of God right there. Right? So what about this text? Before we dive into this text, though, we've got to understand some things that we've missed here, right? This is the 21st chapter of, of Genesis. Last week we read chapter 1, which is the creation story. And this week we get the binding of Isaac or the sacrifice of Isaac. Well, in between here, we have to remember these things that happened, right? Noah came, built an ark, God flooded the world, put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of the promise that he would never again flood the world. There are some other things. Chapter 12 is very important for us to know. At the beginning of chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, God calls Abraham and says to him, Abraham, you will be the father of many nations, which is actually quite interesting because the, name, the word Abraham itself means father of many nations. His name is Father of Many Nations. And in chapter 12, God says to him, Go out and look up into the sky and count them if you can the stars, because your descendants will outnumber the stars in the sky. And then in chapter 17, God says to Sarah and to Abraham that this, this birth of this great nation that Abraham is going to be the father of is going to come through their son. Now remember, or learn... That Abraham and Sarah had issues bearing children and didn't have a child until Abraham was. Does anybody know how old he was? I heard I heard something over here. Ninety nine. I heard a hundred over here. And how old was Sarah? Seventy two. <laughs> Is that a guess? That's an interesting number. You just like pulled it out of the middle of nowhere over here. 72, I heard 98. Sarah was probably about 90. And Abram, Abraham was probably about 100. When they had Isaac. But before all of that, remember there was... Yeah, can you imagine being 100 or 90 and having a baby? <laughs> it, it actually shouldn't happen, right? It's a miracle. God brings life where there can be no life. But before that happens, you have to remember Ishmael came into the picture, right? Um, Sarah's slave went and slept with Abraham to give him an offspring, and, and Abraham had Ishmael. And all of that transpired before we get to chapter 21, where the, the promise comes true, and God gives life to Sarah through the son Isaac. And then after Isaac is weaned in verse 8 of chapter 21, he falls out of the picture until the beginning of chapter 22. And after Isaac is weaned and falls out of the picture, Sarah gets upset and makes Abraham send Ishmael and his mother away. He outcasts them. So now his only son is Isaac. And God comes to him and says, Abraham... Or father of many nations. And he says, here I am. God tells him to take his only son. The son that he'd been waiting for. The son that he had prayed for. The son that he and his wife had fought for. To take him up a mountain and to sacrifice him. Now, does this sound like the God that you want to follow? The correct answer here is... Unless you're wondering, the correct answer here is no. <laughs> Why would God do this? Why would God give Abraham the choice of two choices, neither of which is right? Right? You have, you have one of two choices to do. You have one of two things that you have to do, and neither one of them is a correct choice. The first one is you have to sacrifice your only child. Okay, I'm not going to do that because that's just ridiculous and there's no way that I'm going to sacrifice my child. Right? Are my, all my children in here? Did they hear that? <laughs> just one. <laughs> I'll have to say it again then. And number two is, 
since I'm not going to sacrifice my child, I have to disobey God. Which is wrong as well. Right? Abraham is in a lose-lose situation. He can't sacrifice his only son and he can't disobey God. But why can't Abraham bargain? Because one of the other things that we missed in this whole section here that we didn't hear, in chapter 18, Abraham bargains for the lives of the people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. He goes to God and God is going to destroy the cities and he goes to God and he says, if you can find just 50 people and then 45 and then 40, he works him down to 10 people. He argues with God enough to get him down to 10 people for another city that he's not even living in. And he won't even speak up when God says, now, uh, now that you've been waiting on this kid, take him up the mountain and kill him. Why is that? To test his faith? It doesn't say that, though. But could be. It could be that we're now supposed to be asking the questions. Just like that. Why would, it, why would the God that we love ask Abraham to do this? Why would the God that creates all life and gives life ask someone to take life? There's something else we need to understand, which isn't in the Bible. Many of the societies and communities around the Israelites in that day and age did do child sacrifice because they thought they had to do that in order to appease the gods to get something from the gods. And so maybe this chapter here in, in Genesis is all about us living out in life and living in a community where things happen that shouldn't be happening because God does not want us to sacrifice our children. Sacrificing your children is a sin and is abominable in the eyes of God. But maybe this chapter was put here so that we would understand what these other societies are doing is not right. Because this really is a test of Abraham's faith. It really is a test of our faith. It really isn't a test of Abraham's faith because what does he say here? Right at the beginning, there's three times in here where Abraham is called by name and he says, here I am. The first one is at the beginning. I already read that to you. God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, and Abraham responded, here I am. At the end, when he's getting ready to thrust the knife into Abraham, the angel of the Lord says, Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham stops and he says, here I am. So in the middle, there's another section. As Isaac and Abraham are going up the mountain and Isaac is carrying the wood and Abraham has the fire and the knife, Isaac turns to him and says, Abraham, father. And Abraham says, here I am. To, to us, that means nothing. There's three times where Abraham is called by name and he responds with, here I am. But to the people that wrote this story and to the narrator of this story and to those who would have first heard this story, they hear that as the focal point of the story. So this middle part here where, Ab where Isaac calls out his father's name and, Isaac, and Abraham responds, here I am, is the center point and what we need to focus on in the story. Isaac asked, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And Abraham knew that because how did he respond to his two, to his two young servants that he left behind with the donkey? Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then... We will come back to you. See, to us, this story doesn't make sense because we don't understand the community in which it was written. We don't understand Abraham's faith. But Abraham had a faith that he believed in what God had told him. And he knew that God would never have him sacrifice his child. He knew that God would never ask him to do that. And he knew that God would provide through this. Because given the choice to do what God has called him to do or to deny God and disobey him, Abraham knew that God would never let him down and that God would provide. Because God made the promise in chapter 12... That Abraham would be what? Father of many nations. So Abraham is going to be a father of many nations. So God is not going to take the only way that that promise can be fulfilled. And that is said in chapter 17 too, right? Remember, God said to Abraham and Sarah that Isaac, their offspring, would be the mode through which Abraham would be the father of many nations. It's all about trusting and understanding who God is. Because it's... It helps us to see 
that God will always provide. The other part to this story, which we don't really lay hold of. We could end at at verse 12. When they came to the place that God had showed him, Abraham built an altar and there lay the wood. He bound Isaac. He laid him on top of the altar. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took his knife to kill him, his son. But the angel of the Lord said to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. We could have ended right there. And what hasn't happened yet? What hasn't happened yet? What? The sacrifice didn't happen, but what else hasn't happened? That hasn't happened yet. God didn't need the sacrifice. It didn't even say that God provided it. It just said that after the angel stopped him, Abraham looked up and there it was. Now, yes, God did provide it, but that's not the point of the story. The point is not substantial replacement for the sacrifice. The point of the story is trusting God when he says he wants us to do something to do it. And to know that he is going to provide a way for it to happen. Right? There's been many times in my life where I have not known how things were going to work out. There's been many times in my life when I've wondered what in the world God has gotten me into. There's been many times in my life where I've cried lots of nights. Wondering what I had done to my family. And how God was going to work in and through all of this. But you know what? God has always provided. God has always seen us through. And God has always done what he's promised to do. And that's what we're supposed to get from this. We're supposed to understand that it's not about the sacrifice. That it's about the promise that God made. The promise that God made to Abraham and Sarah that they would bear a son. The promise that God made to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. And the promise that God made to you that you are my beloved child. And I am well pleased with you. Follow where I lead you and help me to show others how much I love them. So live in the promises and trust wholeheartedly that God loves you and will always be with you and will guide you through every aspect of your life.